Hey everyone, this week we are talking about cognitive dissonance. So the last few episodes I've shared um, three of the seven capabilities for new era leaders. We've talked about uncertainty and ambiguity, raising your threshold for dealing with such. Uh, we've talked about personal resilience, the two sides of the coin, both the need to push through, but also that softness to fill back up the gas in your own tank and to, to re receive with openness what's coming at you. Um, and then last episode, we talked about positive conflict, which is <laughs> favorite for me. Uh, this week, I want to talk about cognitive dissonance, which is sort of related to both the uncertainty and the ambiguity and also the conflict. So cognitive dissonance um, is that, that sense of holding two things to be true at the same time. Uh, and I think this is a particularly important quality for leaders to engender when we're looking at you know, essentially, we, we, I mean, we talk about holding space for decisions until the last responsible moment. I think this quality of being able to hold two opinions, two seemingly disparate, two seemingly um, oppositional opinions in our heads at the same time, and, and to be able to sort through those ideas with data and, and with perspective, um, really, really important quality for leaders in the 21st century um, when there might not be a right answer. You know, like we've, we're out of this black and white binary worldview. We're into, there's a spectrum of technicolor that is, you know, it's less about right and wrong. And it's more about if I take this decision, then another set of decisions open up and that actually there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. There simply is the next set of decisions to be made. Um, so cognitive dissonance for me, I think is a really important quality for our leaders to, to think of, like, to think of, to embody as we work with teams when we're when we're sorting through the uncertainty, when we're sorting through the change. And um, I think this quality, for me, this one comes out most strongly when we're talking about changing thinking in leaders. So as a change agent, part of your role is to help educate other leaders around you, right? To help disrupt the organization in a positive way towards something new. Cognitive dissonance is really about being able to see things from two different perspectives and and to be able to have that conscious awareness of what might be going on and, and that empathy around what might be going on for a particular leader who you might be trying to shift from where they are today to where you need them to be. This ability to hold their opinion and their understanding and their perspective in your head whilst at the same time holding space for your own opinions and perspectives and those two things might be in conflict but being able to, to hold on to all of that and then sort of sort your way through it. Really, really important quality. So um, cognitive dissonance, I think, for me, this is, this is something that horses have taught me a lot about. So, um, you know, I've been involved with horses since the age of 13 um, and masters of nonverbal communication. Wow, like, wow, just wow. Um, you know, some of the videos that we've had on retreats where we do the playbacks for participants who are working with an animal and just the subtlety on the cues that, that this animal is picking up and then reflecting back, you know, it, just, it blows people away. But that nonverbal communication is really big. And then I think a lot of, when I'm working with an animal, a lot of the time I am holding this cognitive dissonance and in the sense of what I am trying to achieve through a session. Um, or my vision for where I'm trying to get to and at the same time holding space for recognizing this other animal as a an equal partner in the dance because getting to that greater outcome we need that partnership and so this is these tensions right um, and that holds true in the business world too when I might be working with somebody who doesn't necessarily have the same style as me so you know, I talk about kind of working at the headline level and off we go and, and let's go and have some fun. Boom, Danelle, strategic, go. Um, versus some of the other people that I work with that need to know all those details, right? And, and so how do you hold space for those two things at the same time? How do you, how do you respect and, um, and really cherish that perspective as much as you do your own? And then what comes out of the interplay of the of the two, um, yeah. That's and and horses have been a big part of that for me because it's this constant kind of tension between I as the human being have a have a path that I want us to go down, 
um, and then checking myself around. Actually, I also hold this other thing to be true, which is about equal partnership in a dance and that the outcome that we're looking for actually requires both of us to, to interplay to get there. It's not just about one over another. Um, so a couple of anti-patterns. So cognitive dissonance is um, obviously very closely tied to uncertainty and ambiguity. And it's really, really easy to get into procrastination mode as well. So one of the anti-patterns about holding these two seemingly disparate opinions at the same time, one of the anti-patterns we want to avoid is that idea of constantly reinventing everything. So, you know, Frederick Laloux talks about evolutionary purpose. So the difference between constantly reinventing yourself and constant really reinventing purpose versus a purpose that evolves in, in, in pieces and incrementally and a purpose that, that moves and shifts and changes over time compared to that, I guess, slightly more fragmented, fragmented chaotic change, 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 change. It's this thing, no, it's that thing, no, it's this other thing. That's, that's part of that anti-pattern around cognitive dissonance is that, that flipping back and forth between a couple of things rather than holding space for and evolving those two things together. Um, you also don't want to get stuck in transition, right? You don't want to get stuck in that point where you've got a foot in both camps and we're continually being pulled back and forth between them and we just can't make up our minds. Again, it's into that procrastination kind of um, kind of mindset. And I think, you know, we've talked already about indecision beyond the last responsible moment. Really, if you've got that, that level of dissonance and you're holding that level of conflict and challenge in your own head beyond the point that it's responsible to make a decision, um, you know, that's, again, that's an anti-pattern, right? Because potentially you are in a situation where there is no right answer. You've got a spectrum of answers to choose from, and depending on which answer you choose, another set of decisions open up for you and you will learn something through that path. If you were to choose a different response on that spectrum, then a different set of decisions open up and you learn a different set of set of things. And so again, if you if you're if you're procrastinating and you're holding on to all of that dissonance for too long, and you're going beyond that last responsible moment, then you're losing that opportunity to make the decision to learn from that and to open up that next set of decision making decisions and and to keep making those moves to continue to keep that momentum and keep that progress albeit potentially baby steps so that was what I wanted to share this week um, pretty short and sweet however I think it's a really quick critical quality and it shows up for me most powerfully when I'm working with um, with a leader you know p particularly when that leader has a totally different style for me um, whether it be communication style leadership style um, different set of motivators, different set of drivers, you know, cognitive dissonance and that ability to genuinely respect and hold two different opinions at the same time. That's what helps me to cultivate building that foundation with the leader where we can appreciate and honor each other's um, perspectives, but to, to use that to generate a shift in where we need them to be. That's that's where cognitive dissonance shows up, I think, most powerfully for me. So, yeah, that's it. That's it for this week. Um, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome week. Please drop me a note below. Um, drop me a comment. Drop me an email. Love to hear from you. We're about halfway through the series, so um, let me know what you think. And uh, I will see you again next week for the next in our series of Capabilities for New Era Leaders. Have a great week.